Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hello, and thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk today about pricing strategies for your audiobook. These strategies will be particularly easy to follow if you have signed up for Amplify. Amplify is a direct sale audiobook platform so that authors can sell their audiobooks directly and have much higher royalties and a lot more control. You can learn more about Amplify, which is sort of like the Etsy of audiobooks. You can learn more about it at ProAudioVoices.com. Look in the marketing menu and the drop down for Amplify. We have also had episodes recently talking about Amplify. It has undergone a huge upgrade really recently and the beginning of December, and we're really excited to be rolling it out for all those authors and small publishers that are really trying to get their audiobooks to work for them and to generate a return on their investment and really move into the profitable range for audiobooks. Because audiobooks are quite expensive to produce, which is because they are a very complex production and process, it can be more challenging than some of the other formats to get that return on investment. But they're so worth it. And when you don't have your book in an audiobook format, then you really do miss out on a huge market segment. And that segment keeps growing. People who really just want to listen to books. Now, not everyone is an exclusive audiobook listener. Many of us enjoy all the different formats or a couple of the formats. But leaving the audio out of the picture can be a real detriment. So let's get started and jump into some of the ways that you can figure out what pricing you should use and how you can strategize that over time. When your audiobook is complete, you will know what the finished length of that is. And typically, that length is going to be the primary factor that determines what the price will be. Now, when you distribute through Audible, you don't really have a say in what the price is going to be. You don't even get to make a suggestion. But they do publish a sort of guideline as to what their pricing is in general. And I will read that out for you. So, and you can look this up online very easily. But for books that are under an hour, then typically they're going to charge about $7 or under. If the audiobook is one to three hours, it will probably be selling for $7 to $10. Three to five hours would be $10 to $20. Five to 10 hours would be $15 to $25. 10 to 20 hours would be $20 to $30. And over 20 hours would be $25 to $35. Now, you'll note that there is some overlap in there. For example, you've got 10 hours lands both at the top of the $15 to $25 range and the bottom of the $20 to $30 range. 
So there's not any kind of precision that is happening here. It is just a rough guideline. Now, if your audiobook has some special characteristics, for example, let's say it's a full cast with music and sound effects, it might feel like it's really underpriced to just go with the same kind of pricing that it would for a single narrator. Audible makes no distinction in their pricing between one version and the other. But that doesn't mean that you cannot on your own. As I'm sure you realize, if you have a full cast production, it will have cost you considerably more than hiring just a single narrator to do that same length of text. On the other hand, you want to keep in mind the customer experience and make sure that you're not pricing it out of the range where people are going to comfortably want to purchase it. Now, again, this first step is really just doing some research to find out what your audiobook might be selling for on other platforms. As I say, ACX gives this sort of rough guideline, but if your book is live on Audible, I would suggest you go and find out what they are selling it for. They will typically have the retail price showing, and then they have their subscription price because they are always driving their customers to try to get them to subscribe. Subscriptions are typically $14.95 a month, and that's for one credit. One credit typically buys a book, an audiobook, at any length. Sometimes audiobooks at the much higher range will cost two credits to purchase. But now, Audible is not the only game in town. So I highly recommend that you also go to some other audiobook retailers. Find out what your book is selling for there. So some examples. You may want to go to Libro.fm. That's an excellent audiobook retailer. They support and give back to independent bookstores. Great place to buy audiobooks. And you might want to find out what they're selling it for at audiobooks.com, one of the other biggest audiobook retailers. Similar to Audible, they have a subscription model, and they do not usually sell one-off copies. It's usually all based on the subscription model, but you can still get a a look at what they charge for it. And there are lots of other platforms. Uh, They're very easy to find. Just do a little uh, Google research. You can go to places like Barnes & Noble, find out what they're selling it for there. Once you've done this research and you have a a feel for what your book or similar books are selling for, then we're going to move into some detail about pricing strategies now that we know that information. Let's take a short pause. We'll be right back. Frustrated by the royalty rates for your audiobook, Annoyed that when the digital distributors say 70%, they actually mean 70% of 50% or 80% of 70%, neither of which is an actual 70%. Wishing there was a way to cut out or at least shrink the middleman. Yet, you want your audiobook listeners to have a smooth and positive experience and a direct download sale from your website won't deliver that. Pro Audio Voices hears you. Out of our commitment to our author clients, we've created Amplify, a program that provides an actual 65% royalties of the price you set, that gives you access to your customers' names and emails so you can reconnect with them, and keeps you in the driver's seat. Check it out at ProAudioVoices.com in the marketing menu. Okay, so some of the things to consider when you're pricing your audiobook. First of all, you've done that research and now you have an idea of probably what your book is selling for or would be selling for. And that is likely to be a good range within which you may want to stay, but you don't have to. Now let's think about the fact that Many people, many audiobook listeners, 
our subscribers somewhere else. And typical subscription prices are $14.95. So many audiobooks are selling for about $15 per title, essentially. If it feels appropriate for your audiobook, your particular audiobook, your, the length of it, if it feels appropriate to compete in that range of about $15, either to be comparable with a subscription credit or to even undercut it just a little bit so that you could say it's even cheaper than or cost less than if you were to buy it on Audible with a credit, something like that. That's one approach and something that can be useful to think through and decide if that feels like a good fit for you. Whatever you're selling your print format for is also useful in terms of how you might think about pricing your audiobook. Whatever price you have selected for your hardcover or paperback, if you're not doing a hardcover, is typically about the price that you might want to price your audiobook at. So those two formats have a kind of consistent or a closeness in their pricing. That's pretty typical. But here is the piece that I want you to really keep in mind. This is the most important from my perspective, and that is leave room for discounts and promotions especially when you are on Amplify as a platform, you are able to run promotions and do discounts and you have a lot of control over the pricing of your audiobook. So you want to be able to take advantage of that. And everybody loves a deal. If they know that the retail price is higher and you've dropped it down several dollars, it feels like it's a great deal. It's a bargain. We love that, all of us, even though we know exactly what's going on. So I recommend you find what feels like the appropriate regular retail price, which is probably going to be a little more than most people are going to want to spend, though it might not be, depending on the size or length of your audiobook. might just be that you have a smaller one and it's going to feel easy in any case especially if you have a longer, more substantial audiobook, you're going to want that price to land kind of in the higher side so that you have room to discount significantly and still make a profit. Remember, on the Amplify platform, you're earning at least 65% of the sale price that you select. So the majority of those sale dollars are coming to you you'll know exactly what your commission is going to be. You can't say that when you sell a book through Audible. You never know because they have so many different factors that they're going to put in that formula. And it doesn't usually work out to what you would expect it to be. On Amplify, you are going to know. You can figure it out exactly. You may even want to run campaigns where you set a goal for selling a certain number of copies And then with your pricing, you'll know how much that's going to bring in. It gives you the opportunity if you want to do some kind of advertising or spend some money on the campaign itself, you'll know what your budget is if you hit that goal. Now, granted, if you don't hit the goal, you know, obviously you're not going to make as much, but you will know per sale what you're going to make. So it will help you to scale those dollars and budget appropriately for whatever you'd like to do. And I do highly recommend as well that you run specific scheduled promotions. It's a great way to create some urgency for people, to give you a reason to shout out about what's going on and to generate some fresh opportunities for social media or, you know, other kinds of outreaches and to generate some additional excitement around the moment. I hope that this has been helpful. And again, I strongly, strongly encourage you, if you are not yet signed up for Amplify, the Etsy of audiobooks, if you will, I highly recommend it. 
especially if you're hearing this and it's still 2022, get in now because the price is going up at the beginning of 2023. We'd love to have you on board and help you spread the word about your audiobook and to start generating the kind of royalties and providing the kind of control that you deserve as the content creator. If you have questions, please reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com. We'd love to talk with you. Have an awesome day. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.